is indeed a joy that we can gather together on this Boxing Day morning to continue our celebration of Christmas and Christ's birth. And I wish you blessings in this season as we continue to rejoice in the good news. I want to welcome all of you this morning. I want to welcome all of you here in the sanctuary of Scottsford United Church. And uh, also a warm welcome to those of you who are worshiping from your home as we uh, gather with you through Facebook and YouTube. I am the Reverend Jim Weber Cook, and on behalf of the pastoral charge of Salt Springs, Scottsburn, Lions Brook United Churches, I extend a, a warm welcome to all of you and greetings of this season. It's wonderful to be able to gather together in this season and of course, in the midst of the COVID-19 pandemic, we continue to take all the precautions we can to ensure safety for ourselves and others, including not singing during our worship service. But we are indeed fortunate to have recorded music of our own, and today our music will be provided by recordings of Don and Jeff Gunn, the choir of Scottsboro and Lionsbrook United Churches, and Doreen O'Regan from the St. Luke's United Church. With them, our worship team today includes Stuart Monroe, our organist. Scripture reader is Mary Weber Cook. Minute for Mission reader, Elizabeth Chanel. And our trusty videographer, Christine McKenzie. I want to say thanks to all of them for contributing their gifts in worship today. I also want to acknowledge that this service uh, is one I've adapted that was provided for Boxing Day by the National United Church of Canada on our church's website. And it celebrates some of the history and the meaning of Boxing Day. And uh, that is a gift to all of us in the church to have uh, this service offered to us. As usual, through this pandemic, the offering plates are on the pew at the uh, entry to the sanctuary. And part of this service, a good part of it, celebrates the ministry of the church on this final Sunday of this 2021. And the ministry, not just of our local churches and our pastoral charges, but of our entire church through mission and service and how we reach out in so many ways to meet the needs of people. And you'll hear some about that today. Since this is a combined service of our pastoral charge, want to acknowledge that any offering envelopes will be distributed to the uh, proper congregational treasurer. Next Sunday, the date will be January 2nd, 2022, the first Sunday of the new year. And at this point, at least, who knows what's going to happen in the next few days. But at this point, the plan is for our worship services to be held at 9.15 a.m. at St. Luke's United in Salt Springs and here at Scottsford United at 11 a.m. as we honor Epiphany and uh, conclude our Christmas celebrations. It will be also a celebration of the Sacrament of Holy Communion. And those of you who regularly worship from your home, if you can keep that in mind and be prepared with uh, some juice or wine and some bread or crackers to share in the sacrament. Because next week is January 2nd, it also means it's Fun Script Sunday. <laughs> Didn't we just have one? <laughs> Where did the month go? But uh, I also note, uh, Hilton has asked me to note, although he will still be away, he will be doing orders via email for the Scottsford congregation. And of course, Susan is away, and she will, as, like, uh, as well, be doing emails to uh, gather the orders for Fun Script. I am grateful that you folks have come out this morning, knowing that Boxing Day, the day immediately after Christmas Day, is probably a day when people are mostly just taking it easy, being at home with their feet up. I'm grateful that uh, we're here together for this service, and I welcome you to stand to share with me in the call to worship, which is printed in your worship book. We gather once again to celebrate the birth of Jesus, to ponder the gift of Jesus as Mary did when she held her child. 
to glorify God as the shepherds did when they saw love lying in a manger. To remember that Jesus' love was an out-of-the-box kind of love. The prophets knew Jesus would grow to love without limits, caring for strangers and friends alike, instructing followers to love their neighbors. When Jesus said, love your neighbor, he meant everyone. His love was so profound that even from that very first day, the angels couldn't keep from singing. The music continues to this day. Glory, hallelujah, Christ is born. Let us worship God with gladness. Please be seated. basically has become today. But I will tell you now that it was originally a day focused on sharing and giving. Which sounds a lot like Christmas Day, doesn't it? When we share gifts with loved ones and our families, when we share gifts with friends and neighbors and other special people in our lives, that's Christmas Day. But Boxing Day has its origins in sharing and giving, but not to those particular people, to others. And I'll get to that a little later. Boxing Day, of course, what does it make you think of? It makes me think of boxes. And I smile when I remember the Christmas Day many years ago that Mary and I 
gave pencil boxes to my little brother and little sister as part of their Christmas gift package. Those pencil boxes were made of very strong, thick cardboard, and they had wonderful child designs and characters on them. They were very colorful. And you know what a pencil box is, about this, you know, just about yay high, about this big. And we were living in Saskatchewan at the time, and of course we sent these pencil boxes as part of Eric and Mandy's gifts. I think they were elementary school age. Maybe Eric wasn't quite that old. And we later heard from my dad and his wife Jean that Mandy and Eric were quite perplexed on Christmas morning, wondering why we had sent them empty boxes. I guess we should have put some pencils or erasers in them to indicate what they were meant to hold. But they thought we had forgotten to include the gift. And why on earth would we send my sister and brother empty boxes? Since Boxing Day was originally a day focused on sharing and giving, I share with you and give to you today a gift which you found in your pew. I'm not sure if you know this about me, but I am quite a saver, quite a collector, as Mary will attest. And I am apt to pretty much save and collect anything, even boxes. I never like to get rid of them, but rather think it's more environmentally friendly to store them and keep them and repurpose them and reuse them for something. And you know, it's always handy to have a good box around. And you never know what size or shape of box you might need, so the more boxes you have, the better. Well, my box collection has grown and it's spreading out in our basement, so Mary has told me in this new year, I have to diminish my box collection. And so, I thought, why well, wait for the new year? I'll start now. I'll share them. And so I'm sharing with you this morning a box for each of you. Unboxing day. I think that's quite appropriate. But I learned all those years ago from Mandy and Eric in their childhood that giving an empty box, even if it has a practical use, is not a very good or welcome thing. And so your box isn't empty. You can open your boxes now. On Christmas Eve, there were candy canes in the pews where everyone was seated, and a lot of people didn't take them with them or enjoy them. But I hope you will enjoy the treats that are inside your boxes this morning. And if it's not something you can enjoy yourself, for some health reason, or you're not partial to sugar, I can't imagine, you can share them with someone who would enjoy them. Just a little bit of candy in those boxes for you today. You see, I can give boxes and I can share candy with you on this Boxing Day. Today's service focuses on sharing and giving. Christmas Day may be over. But God calls us to be generous all the time. That's why, at least one reason, we have an offering at church every week. It reminds us that God has blessed us with gifts that we can share, and that God invites us to be generous with the gifts we have. The gifts of our time, our talents, our abilities, and our money. Not just at Christmas time, but all the year round. And of course, you and I know that some of the best gifts are not the ones we can put in a box. They're not the ones we can wrap up and hand to someone. Some of the best gifts are gifts of sharing our time with someone, or a listening ear, or our assistance to another in need, or a special prayer. Gifts of kind words, gifts of compassion and of love. As we continue to celebrate the birth of Jesus, we think of all those kinds of gifts which Jesus generously and joyfully gave to others.
Listen now to the Christmas story from the Gospel of Luke, as though I'm reading it to you for the first time. You may even want to close your eyes and visualize the scene. Note the variety of ways characters in the story respond to the good news. Put yourself in their shoes. What would your response be? May God bless us with insight as we listen to a reading from our sacred scripture. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom God favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in a manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told to them. I want to acknowledge that the reflection that I'm sharing today, uh, Stuart is assisting me with, because it includes both spoken word and music. We would have been singing a verse of the various carols that are part of this reflection. Those words to those carols are printed in your worship bulletin, but Today, we will enjoy Stuart playing them as we listen, but I invite you to follow along with the words to those verses that are in your bulletin, and perhaps in your mind and with your heart, you can sing them. So what do you usually do, typically, on boxing? As little as possible. <laughs> as little as possible. Some people might say they fall into a turkey coma, or they might tidy up the aftermath after Christmas Day and the dinner and, well, in normal years, family gatherings. I expect some would say, well, on Boxing Day, I watch a football game or a hockey game, more likely, as the junior, uh, junior hockey uh, begins. Some people, sadly, on Boxing Day, take down their Christmas trees. I mean, if you put them up the middle of November, I guess you're tired of them by the day after Christmas Day. But that's sad to me because Christmas has just begun. The season of Christmas begins on the 25th of December. Of course, a lot of people on Boxing Day, they head out to the stores, shopping for bargains or markdown sales. Of course, here in Nova Scotia, by and large, we don't do that or can't do that because the stores remain closed as a holiday on Boxing Day. But in a lot of other jurisdictions, for many people, Boxing Day is about shopping. Shopping for deals and for more stuff, what we all need. After the shepherds visited the Holy Family and shared what the angels had told them about Jesus, 
namely that he would bring good news of great joy, Scripture says that Mary treasured their words and pondered them in her heart. In other words, she grew quiet and reflective. On the other hand, the shepherds went on their way glorifying and praising God, treasuring, pondering, glorifying, praising. All are appropriate responses to receiving profound news. In Matthew's Gospel, the Magi arrive on the scene offering gifts, which we will remember and celebrate next Sunday. Their response to hearing the good news of Jesus' birth is to offer a gift, a gift that symbolizes who Jesus was and what he would become in those gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. So Boxing Day is a good day for doing as little as possible, I suppose, but it's also a good day for pondering and treasuring the Christmas story for pondering the call that it places upon us. And it is also a good, do good day for glorifying and praising. It's a great day to contemplate generosity. As I'll explain after Stuart plays a verse of In the Bleak Midwinter, Boxing Day was originally a day to give. <laughs> sandwiches, football, hockey, and discounts, it was a day known as a good time to serve those in need. There are various theories about how Boxing Day came to be. One theory suggests that it came from the practice of giving Christmas boxes of goodies and gifts to servants, along with giving them the day off after the busy work that they had offered during the Christmas time, the Christmas day. Another theory suggests that the tradition came from a custom in the late Roman, early Christian era, in which alms boxes would be placed in the entrance of churches to gather money or other items to be given to those living in poverty. And so on the day after Christmas day, on the feast of Saint Stephen, a Christ Christian martyr known for charitable acts, those gifts of money or Christmas boxes would be taken and distributed to those who were poor. Incidentally, the Feast of St. Stephen falls on the day after Christmas Day. And in some churches, Stephen is celebrated today. Now, although we Protestants aren't all that big on saints, I'll bet you know about St. Stephen. Maybe even just a little bit. Maybe you know that because of a particular Christmas carol which mentions Stephen. It tells a story about a king and about his generosity and kindness towards those who were poor in earthly goods. Generosity and kindness that indeed was inspired by the life and witness of St. Stephen, whose footsteps the king followed in. You know the carol as Good King Wenceslas, which tells the story. Good King Wenceslas looked out on the feast of Stephen. When the snow lay round about, deep and crisp and even. Brightly shone the moon that night, though the frost was cruel. When a poor man came in sight, gathering winter's fuel. 
Hither, page, and stand by me, if thou knowest it telling. Yonder peasant, who is he? Where and what his dwelling? Sire, he lives a good league hence, underneath the mountain, right against the forest fence, by St. Agnes. Bring me flesh, and bring me wine, bring me pine logs hither. Thou and I will see him die when we bear them thither. Page and monarch, forth they went, forth they went together. Through the rude wind's wild lament and the bitter weather. Sire, the night is darker now, and the wind blows stronger. Fails my heart. I know not how. I can go no longer. Mark my footsteps, my good page. Tread thou in them boldly. Thou shalt find the winter's rage freeze thy blood less cold. In his master's steps he trod, where the snow lay dinted. Heat was in that very sod which the saint had printed. Therefore, Christian folk, be sure, wealth or rank possessing, ye who now will bless the poor, shall yourselves find the blessing. Regardless of which historical thread you follow in the development of Boxing Day, Boxing Day was always meant to be a day for contemplation and a day for generosity. This morning, I would invite us to align ourselves with the roots of this day, the day that calls us to compassion. including 
those living across Canada, including those living around the world. And as the United Church, we share our resources so we can have a bigger impact than any of our churches could do individually. After we hear a verse of a little town of Bethlehem, I want to tell you David's story, or at least part of it, because it illustrates just how important it is that our generosity isn't constrained by artificial borders of geography or even borders of judgment. Christmas is one of the loneliest times of the year. Ten years ago, my wife and I were living our dream, running a successful catering business in Vancouver. But that was before a drunk driver took my wife's life, says the And that was just the beginning. Quoting David again. The heartbreak was still fresh for me, when six weeks later, a work accident claimed the life of my 23-year-old son. In the blink of an eye, he was gone. And a few months later, I got a call that my daughter's car had veered off the road. And by the time she had been found, she was frozen to death in her car. In five months, David's entire family was gone. And David turned to substances to try to numb his great pain. My rock bottom came when I was arrested for carrying drugs. In jail, I had a lot of time to think about the man I had become and about the man I wanted to become. I knew that I needed to make some huge changes if I ever wanted to be happy again and become the man my beloved wife and kids had known me to be since. The Bissell Center, which is supported through gifts to our Mission and Service Fund, was the first place that David went after he was released from jail. The staff greeted me with kindness. Instead of judging me, they welcomed me and handed me a warm plate of food. The staff told me about their mental health and housing support programs, and I was blown away for the first time. I realized that I didn't have to rebuild my life all over, he says. Our generosity to mission and service helps people like David to start over. And in their most painful hour, it is one of the ways you and I tell them that they matter to us. One of the ways we tell them that they matter to God. Is there any better gift than to let someone know how valued and loved they are? just as they
the beginning of this reflection today, I asked you, what is it you typically do today on this Boxing Day? Have turkey leftovers, watch TV, put your feet up, clean up a little bit. Well, if you give to mission and service of our United Church of Canada, I want you to know that you are doing far, far more than any of those things. Right now, your generosity is restoring dignity to some people. It's putting food on a table and a roof over the head for some people this Christmas season. It's letting someone know that they aren't alone in this world. It's providing education, agricultural training, and life-saving advocacy. And for some, our generosity means a second chance at life. Through our gifts, we are bringing great joy. The angels sang of that. Treasure that thought today. Treasure knowing that you are making a difference in the lives of other people. On this day that has somehow morphed into becoming about getting a great deal or putting our feet up, remember that it is also a day for giving and for compassion. May God bless us all with the wisdom to appreciate all that we have, with the wisdom to give as we are able to be generous. Like Mary and the shepherds, the Magi and Jesus himself, let's go into the new year ahead of us, treasuring and pondering, glorifying and praising, and yes, giving. Let's take love out of any boxes we put it in because love doesn't belong in a box. Let's love extravagantly, sharing who we are and our gifts so that the good news of great joy that is in the Christ reaches out to all people. Isolated seniors living alone and in poor health 
not only receive help to access services they need, but also know what it means to feel seen and cared for. Giving is about more than making a gift. It's about lighting the way for others. It's up to each and every one of us to be the light in the lives of those who are suffering. Together, we can make the difference our world needs. Thank you for your generosity. God bless you for sharing your light in all the ways that you do. Thank you, Elizabeth. I didn't hear the news until driving out here to Scotsman this morning. The news that Archbishop Desmond Tutu died this morning. And uh, what a figure he has been in the life of our generation in this world. As part of our prayers today, let us give thanks for his witness and for the transformative changes that his faith has brought about, not only in South Africa, but for the world. In the days leading up to Christmas, some of us get pretty rushed and harried as we prepare for Christmas Day. This year, of course, we have all been urged to uh, slow down and have a slow Christmas, as Premier Houston and Dr. Strang have encouraged, to have less social interactions and events. And you know, slowing down sometimes isn't such a bad thing. It has its benefits too. In our time of prayer this morning, we're going to slow it down a little with the gift of music, such as we also had in the reflection. A time for you to ponder and contemplate as you hear the gift that Stuart plays of the carol, Still, Still, Still. Let us open our heart to ponder the meaning of Christmas, to reflect on what it means to live as Christian people, to live generously as those inspired by Jesus. Let us pause and pray. Most loving God, for many people, Boxing Day has become all about buying and getting deals. But we ask that you turn our attention in a different way today to gratitude and generosity. Gratitude for what we already have, and have received, and generosity to give as we can. Quiet us now, O oh God, to open our hearts to you with thoughts of appreciation and thanksgiving. We ponder all the gifts for which we are grateful this Christmas, not just gifts unwrapped now and placed under our Christmas trees, but gifts of love and care, gifts of creation's beauty and abundance, gifts of faith and peace. And this morning, celebrating the gift of the life of Archbishop Desmond Tutu, we give thanks for his witness to faith and for the force of justice he has been in this world. thanks in this season for nurses, for doctors, who have worked and are working through this Christmas season, and for all healthcare staff who have been under such tremendous strain and pressure throughout this long pandemic. We give thanks for truck drivers and store clerks and people in the service industry who have worked long hours to provide for people's needs under difficult circumstances. We think of all those people who give of themselves generously through their vocations in order to support and care for others. We pray for them with gratitude.
God, we give thanks for our church, for the Church of Christ all around this world, seeking to be a voice for those forgotten or marginalized, seeking to offer social ministries to people in need of food or shelter, encouragement or guidance and affirmation. Our church seeking to offer a ministry in which the good news of your love in Christ is shared with all without judgment. We are grateful indeed for the ministry of our pastoral church, Salt Spring, Scottsboro, and Lionsbrook. And we are grateful for the sense of community we share as a church community and for the mutual care we find in these congregations for ourselves and for others. And we're grateful for the wider ministry of our United Church through mission and service. We think of all the gifts of time and prayer, of money and talent and ability given generously in Christ's name by so many people. Bless the offerings we make, O oh God, to support our local congregations and mission and service. We pray for Christ's church with gratitude. who are struggling in these times, struggling with anxiety and fear, with homelessness and isolation, with regret and broken relationships as a result of poor choices. We pray for those who are struggling with illness and with infirmity due to age and for all in seniors institutions who once again are not able to have the same family and friends come to be with them. We pray for those who struggle with grief, with deep feelings of loss. And we hope the good news of Christ can reach each of them, not just in words, but also through actions. We bring to mind today those we know who could use a call of a kind word of care, those who would be helped by sharing a meal even if it's just dropped off at their door. Those who would feel less alone because of a card or an email they receive. We ponder, O oh God, what gifts of care we can share in these days. sharing it with our family and friends and neighbors at home and around the world. And when we are tempted to limit love, may you open our hearts and our minds. Stir our hearts to care deeply, to live compassionately, and to impress this world with your love. In the way of the one who taught us what it means to love our neighbor, we pray now the words Jesus taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I welcome you to rise as Doreen sings, Go Tell It on the Mount. Oh 